Dear friend, welcome to all of you, our friends from uh, La Commanderie d'Amérique, de la Confrérie des Chevaliers du Tas de Vin. It's a pleasure to welcome you back online for the tasting of Tastevinage wines. Yesterday we were in the vineyards to celebrate Saint Vincent in puligny montrachet and today we were in the chateau for the auction of the Hospice de Nuit Saint-Georges, as just finished in our Grand Cellier. Yet, this is the second tasting online since last year in April, you were already online. We organized with the Testevin team and with the help of GPG Peter Gleish. It is four years now that we have been creating the major of the Testevinage, a selection of Bourgogne wines that for each level of appellation guarantee enjoyment and great, great discoveries. Merci pour votre présence. Thanks for your presence. Peter, do you want to say some words before beginning? Hopefully you hear me. As a Grand PDA General of the Commanderie d'Amérique, I'm also happy to welcome all of you to the Tastevin uh, event today. It's our second, as Vincent said, our second uh, webinar wine tasting. We welcome the 100 U.S. Tastevin attendees who have linked in today. Uh, COVID has certainly uh, had a an effect on our schedule, but it hasn't. Uh, dampened our enthusiasm and we've come up with these new approaches to being together and celebrating our love for Burgundy. I would also like to take a moment to say thank you to Grand Maître Vincent Barbier, Intendant General Arnaud Arcel, and all of the award-winning winemakers for making this webinar possible. This is a truly a special event I'd like to say thank you to all of you, especially for doing it Sunday, French time, six o'clock PM, Sunday evening, to make it convenient and accommodate the American time difference. We greatly appreciate it. We also appreciate your speaking in English. I assure you that your English is better than our French, but I will say to you and the winemakers, to the winemakers in particular, Félicitations, Congratulations on receiving the prestigious Majors Tasti Vinage Award. We are, are eager to hear your comments and taste your wonderful wines. Merci encore. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Uh, my name is Arnaud Orsel, and I am the Intendant General of the Confrérie des Chevaliers du Tas de Vin. I will lead uh, this tasting, uh, which goes into uh, two directions. Uh, first was to discover the 2016 vintage, a vintage that you might have in your cellar uh, yet, um, and uh, that is um, starts to be uh, very nice to be to be uh, tasted. And the second uh, is to uh, go around the Chateau du Claude Bougeot, where we are located today. Uh, you know that the chateau uh, is uh, is the seat of the of the Confrérie des Chevaliers de Vin and the the climat du vignoble de Bourgogne, and we have a beautiful climat uh, around the chateau. Um, so the idea was to, uh, to travel through uh, the Claude Vougeot and the different uh, appellation around uh, the Claude Vougeot. Um, we have uh, several uh, guests that will be present uh, during the tasting that you will discover um, little by little. Um, it's a chance, it's a great opportunity for us to, uh, to welcome them and, uh, and uh, to have them uh, uh, tasting the wines uh, with us. And uh, we have a, a tough job because we have a, a total of uh, 12 bottles uh, in, uh, in front of us, only three uh, whites and uh, nine reds. And the first, uh, first, wi first wines are, uh, as I said, around the 2016 vintage. So my idea first is to uh, describe you um, what it has been uh, for the 2016 uh, vintage. We had, um, as you might uh, remember, or we all remember here in Burgundy, uh, frost uh, in April and then hail in May. So the, the, the weather conditions for the start of the, of the vintage were not uh, 
uh, so great. The Burgundy vineyard produced a reduced but splendid 2016 harvest, magnified by the strong July, July and August sun on a beautiful Indian summer. Uh, in the end, the spare clothes wa will provide uh, exceptional wines, as uh, we, uh, we, we will see. An observation never before observed in Burgundy, in any case for 40 years, the heat of summer did not mark the vintage. 2016 is revealed as a cold vintage born after three months of heat and beautiful light at the end of the course associated with cool nights. Not spicy notes, coffee, mocha, as in 2015, a year of heat, but evocation of red fruit, blackberries, and strawberries. Um, as I said, it's a bad start, uh, but beautiful finish 2016 presents a similar relationship with 1978. I was not so old by that time, but I got the chance to taste a few of uh, 1978 vintage. Um, and uh, and um, a very long, breathtaking finish. Um, we can see also a similarity with uh, vintage 2010, but uh, a bit more mature than, uh, than 2010. The year 2016 has, however, started very badly for the vegetative cycle of the vine. Too mild a winter, too much rain in spring, early bird break, terrible fraud on the nights on the 26th and 27th uh, of April, and then uh, hail in Chablis. So uh, you can imagine that uh, this was not uh, a very um, uh, positive start, and it reminds us a bit of the vintage 2021 that uh, we are just uh, um, busy bottling now. Uh, uh, not, 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 not yet, but uh, in process of, uh, of uh, aging. And so um, it's, uh, it's a problem now, the, uh, the frost in, uh, in Burgundy. Um, uh, a weakened vine is easy prey for powdery mildew, and especially uh, mildew. At the end of June, um, they, they fortunately, July and August and September were good for the vines, with a little rain and the right time for uh, the logs to swell. Excessive heat, a certain time, which goes from some scratchings, but without too much damage. So this is uh, more or less what I can tell you about the vintage, and now we're gonna uh, discover by uh, tasting um, and see we if the, the maturity uh, finally gives a, a great balance uh, uh, to to the wine. Uh, as I said, we're gonna travel to uh, through Burgundy. Um, the first uh, wine we're gonna test is the Bourgogne Haute Côte de Nuit 2016. So um, I'm just going to say a few words. Uh, les Vinotes are these uh, strange little bottles that you received, and I hope uh, all of you received the bottles. Uh, it's only two centiliters. Um, it's very small, but it's, it's enough for, um, uh, for um, uh, a good tasting. Uh, and also, it was convenient to, to ship the bottles uh, to the US. Um, so uh, this, uh, let's start with um, the Tastevinage Online Masterclass. We, have, we are 100 uh, online with 1,200 uh, wine samples. Um, we believe the tasting will take 90 uh, minutes uh, with 12 Burgundian domains and uh, three whites and nine reds. Um, so you have the dispatch of the bottles here. Uh, you will see the bottles all carry uh, the emblem of the confrérie that you know well. Um, and uh, this is the Tastevinage. It exists since 1950. On next Friday, we're going to celebrate uh, our 109th tasting of the Tastevinage at the Château du Clos Rougeau. As the Grand Met said, um, today, uh, uh, this, uh, this week has been uh, yet very uh, hectic uh, with the Saint Vincent Tournant and uh, with, uh, with the auction of the Hospice de Beaune. But we are entering the Grand Jour de Bourgogne. And the Grand Jour de Bourgogne is a week of tastings that will finish uh, with uh, the Taste Vinage and the next day, La Paulée de Printemps in the Chateau de Meursault. So we're going to have plenty of wines to test and plenty of um, great moment to, uh, to live. Um, so let's go back to this uh, little bottle um, um, and start with, uh, with uh, the Haute Côte de Nuit. 
you see on the screen um, uh, the um, you see on the screen the map of uh, of Burgundy. Uh, we will test some uh, Chablis wines. Obviously, the Chablis is not located where it is. It's far further north than on the map. Uh, and the Haute Côte de Nuit is the vineyard that is located uh, uh, in the in the slope that is just behind the slope that we have uh, here in uh, in Côte de Nuit. So I suggest uh, we're gonna open the little <laughs> bottles. Uh, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, cher Grand Maître, okay. uh, it's quite easy. We don't need a, a, a corkscrew, and uh, we are we are happy to get this uh, special uh, glasses of the Testevinage that we have here. So it's, it looks like a, a vaccine or something like that. But <laughs> <laughs> so don't miss too much, and um, so I already have the great flavors of um, of the. Um, of the wines coming to me. Um, so this is wine is coming from a domain Manuel Olivier. It's a, it's a domain that is located in uh, Conquer uh, Corgoin, which is uh, up, up, the, um, up the, the hill of uh, Von uh, Romane and uh, Nuit Saint-Georges, we can say. And, uh, and uh, the soils are of this uh, special uh, vines are made uh, with hard limestone rock, on the summit, turning to clay further down, uh, on calcareous gravel, on debris on the flanks, on the base of the slopes. Um, so let's. Uh, the, the Bourgogne de Côte de Nuit is a total of uh, 301 acres, so it's uh, in uh, white. So this is a Chardonnay, obviously. Um, and uh, and uh, we can have a few information about uh, this uh, Haute Côte de Nuit. As I said, the uh, domain Manuel Olivier uh, is, uh, is an hameau de, de Corboin. So he's, he's uh, um, a very... Um, um, Manuel Olivier is, uh, is a domain that presents a lot of, um, of uh, uh, wines to the Taste Vinage. He has been awarded uh, four uh, Major du Tête Vinage, and today we're going to taste two of them. So you see on the map uh, the location of the Haute Côte, so just behind Chambol, Vaughan, and Nuit Saint-Georges. Um, and uh, this is a, a perfect uh, entry wine for, uh, for a tasting. So we have a pale uh, yellow rub um, um, with um, a light uh, golden uh, color. Great fruit, white flower, a few uh, woody character. Um, very elegant, quite energetic, and um, a good minerality on the, on the palette. Chagrin Maître. Uh, do you enjoy the, the wine? Yes. I have no more wine in my glass. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh. Yes, I think it's uh, for an entry, an entree, very nice with, uh, for instance, jambon persillé or uh, escargot or uh, everything in entree. I think this is a good wine to, to prepare mouth and palate for the following wines. It's, it's a good way uh, to start the tasting. I hope you uh, all enjoy this wine. Um, you know, at the, at the Confrérie, we, uh, we uh, promote every wines of Burgundy, not only Grand Cru, obviously, and, um, and uh, this is the base of Burgundy, uh, you know, the pyramid of, of the wines of Burgundy. And, uh, and so um, this is um, uh, the regional appellation, uh, which is the largest appellation, uh, the Bourgogne. But it's a, it's a very important to discover um, that quality of wines um, on uh, on such uh, on such um, appellation because you have plenty of different wines in obviously in uh, in Haute Côte de Nuit. So I even have some spare wine in my glass. So uh, finally, we should do even the smaller bottles. No, I don't know. Uh, but. Um, it gives us um, a very good uh, start. So the, the next, um, the next uh, wine that uh, we are going to taste is a Chablis. Um, so Chablis, obviously, uh, you know very well where it's uh, located. 
vieille vigne, Taste Vinay, which has been uh, selected in 2018. Um, so a few words on, uh, on Chablis. From Petit Chablis to uh, Grand Cru, the vineyard of Chablis cover a large area of uh, 10, around 10,000 uh, acres, located at the north of Burgundy in the Yon district, not too far from Paris, uh, oh. actually. Uh, there are 40 premier crus, um, uh, which represent uh, 1934 acres, uh, on the commune of Chablis, a few, a few villages uh, around Chablis. Um, so you saw, you have heard about Kimmeridgean limestone. Uh, they come from the Jurassic period and they contain these uh, small little oysters um, that we call the uh, Austria virgula. Um, Excusez-moi, um, est-ce qu'on peut avoir l'image ici? Okay. Um, and uh, laid down uh, during the Upper Jurassic some 150 million years ago. Um, so the Chablis, uh, the Chablis uh, soil is, uh, is, uh, is uh, obviously uh, a marine origin that uh, gives strong iodine and uh, mineral flavor to Chablis wines and is favorable to, uh, to Chardonnay gra gra grape. I don't manage to say grape yeah. today. Strange. Um, so I talk too, too much. much. Too much Pelini Morache. Ah, yes, we had a few, uh, few uh, Pelini Morache uh, bottles. <laughs> but today, this is Chablis Premier Cru uh, Vieille Vigne, Les Vaillons, uh, from Domaine Guirobin, which is also um, a domaine that is uh, very uh, um, uh, present in the, in the Tad Vinage. So I propose that to use these little bottles. Uh, and uh, to, uh, to test. The name of the premier cru is Vaillon, and uh, Vaillon means a petite vallée, small vallée, uh, that has been transformed little by little, you know, from, uh, from Latin um, to uh, Valles. Um, um, it's a space lying between two hills, as you know. Um, the Chablis premier cru Vaillon is located on the left side of the Serene uh, River. Um, if you have a look, uh, this is a map of, uh, of uh, Chablis. You have the, the Serin, uh, which is passes uh, in the middle of, uh, of Chablis. And then on the left bank, you have different uh, premier cru. And Le Vaillon is uh, the one that you see uh, which is now um, uh, around with, uh, with a gold uh, circle. Um, the uh, the uh, Grand Cru are located uh, in the other side of the Serin, but uh, this, uh, this Premier Cru is something um, very uh, interesting and, uh, and uh, we um, we're happy to, to taste. So obviously it's a Chardonnay. The vines are between 30 and 60 years old. Um, as I said, the soil is clay and, and limestone. Um, and this has been aged in, um, in, uh, on lease for 10 months. So no barrels uh, for Chablis, as you know, um, and some time for the, for the Grand Cru, but uh, on this wine, uh, it has been, um, vinification uh, has been um, uh, taken by hand and, um, and uh, spontaneous alcoholic and maloactive fermentation. When I say no barrel, obviously uh, you, you have uh, the use of uh, older barrels. Uh, um, I was meaning uh, no, um, no new wood uh, on, uh, on this. So it's small, tiny production. Um, but I speak very too much. You have time to taste and I don't have. Yeah. Very classic, very classic Chablis. Very straight, very direct, I know. Very, very good Chablis. Mm, we have um, but a true Chablis. But we have a Chablis. lot of minerality into the wine, um, and this uh, this also has a, uh, a nice um, future, I believe. Um, it's interesting to see that uh, 2016 um, test is very well uh, today, um, and uh, I would easily uh, drink uh, this wine with uh, I don't know maybe frog legs. Uh, but the, the, mo the, the, the fun thing with Chablis is uh, we have uh, a Grand Cru called uh, Les Grenouilles. So maybe, uh, maybe uh, we should um, test uh, frog legs with Chablis Les Grenouilles. Um, anyway, um, I hope and I believe uh, 
this uh, you will enjoy this uh, this very nice wine very refreshing uh, very shabby um, and and uh, with uh, with a pretty good uh, pretty good length um, and a, a great uh, harmonious uh, finish um, so this is uh, this is um, uh, it for the 2016 and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, now we are going to uh, to go um, a bit uh, further down. Maybe I, I speak too much. <laughs> <laughs> I let you a little time for for the tasting, um, um, but I still have uh, a little bit of wine in my uh, in my glass. Mm. The idea of the test of vintage is really to uh, to to select the wines, um, and and this uh, Chablis uh, from uh, Domaine Robin. It's been uh, vinified by uh, by a lady, and it's interesting to to see that uh, um, it has uh, it has uh, developed uh, its um, its uh, international sales, and I believe you can find it also um, in the U.S., which is something important. But as you know, we don't sell wine at the Tadvan. The idea is just to promote and to help um, some of the domain to, um, to, uh, for, for you to discover. Um, another appellation that I really enjoy is, uh, is Montagny. Um, not only uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the um, furthermost uh, white of, uh, of uh, Côte Chalonnaise, uh, Montagny Premier Cru has uh, Montagny has many many uh, Premier Cru in his vineyards, and the typicity is uh, interesting because the soil of uh, of Montagny is sometimes uh, quite similar to the soil of uh, of Chablis. Uh, so we are located in southern end of the Côte Chalonnaise in the district of Saône-et-Loire, um, and the appellation is in uh, around four villages: uh, Buxy. Montagny les Buxy, Jules les Buxy, on Saint Valerin, where I got married, so something important for me. <laughs> Facing east, the southeast uh, hillside and the uh, Bajocian limestone are planted with vines of altitude of 250 and 400 uh, meters. Um, so Montagny produces only white wine from Chardonnay grape. Um, this uh, ideal aspect on the Camerigian, uh, Camerigian limestone soil. As I said, same geology uh, than, uh, than Chablis. Um, so the history of the vineyard is uh, back in the Middle Age. Uh, the monks of uh, Cluny um, uh, started to plant the vineyard. Uh, it's, a, it's not a very big appellation, 805 acres uh, and 49 different premier crews lying on the around 500 acres of, of vineyards. Um, so this uh, this is a premier cru called the Lecoer, and uh, if you if you look at the so this is a global map of uh, of Côte Chalonnaise, uh, and then you have uh, the map of uh, Montagny. Um, so Lecoer is uh, located uh, on the on the departmental nine eight uh, one. You s you see the little uh, oh we have a beautiful technique. Once again, oh, it's a two. Okay, I can play with that. It's fun. You see, a grand maître where well, Lecoer Le is uh, is located, and Lecoer yes. is uh, his name is uh, is after um, um, the uh, hazelnut. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a way to uh, to do to um, to call uh, the uh, hazelnut trees, and uh, it could have been that in the past some hazelnut um, trees were planted in this uh, vineyard. So, okay. once colères, again, c'est pas les colères. C'est pas les colères. No, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's coer. It's a. Uh, it's a uh, nice appellation. So I take the bottle. Uh, you can take the small bottles, and uh, and fill in the the glass. So the wine has been. Uh, Aged in traditional um, traditional way uh, into uh, into oak and fermentation and uh, aging into uh, oak barrels and uh, um, it's uh, stayed on leaves from eight to ten months. It's 
small production, 20,000 bottles. So I have a lot of uh, mint, um, uh, vanilla, and uh, and uh, some aromas of um, of uh, patisserie at the nose. Once again, very delicate, very. Um, very nice and long uh, flavor. Uh, Domaine Feuillage Vio, um, it's, uh, it's um, a family estate. Uh, and uh, this one also has been vinified by a lady. You will see that uh, we, have, um, we have a few um, ladies winemakers that uh, are um, 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 producing wines. Um, and uh, we are happy to welcome one of uh, one of them uh, a little further when uh, we will uh, be um, around uh, around uh, Vujo. So uh, I believe uh, this is once again uh, a, a great appellation. I don't know uh, if you can easily find uh, Montagny Premier Cru in the U.S. Uh, I think uh, the, this appellation, uh, which used to be in 2016 uh, the last Premier Cru. Um, of uh, south of Burgundy and uh, and uh, as you know now we have a new premier cru in uh, in Bourgogne uh, with uh, with uh, Pouilly <coughs> but uh, but at that time uh, 2016 was the last uh, further south uh, premier cru of uh, of Bourgogne um, so I believe this is a typical uh, bottle that I want to have in my cellar. Um, and uh, and uh, we are not here uh, to uh, to uh, propose all the um, wines that you know very well, uh, the the Puligny, the Meursault, or the Chassagne, or the Charlemagne. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the last of the whites that we wanted to taste. What we see from the three wines that we've been tasting, three white wines, we all have a very nice minerality and a very nice finish. Not too much alcohol in the wine, uh, very nice balance. And um, so even though uh, there was a, 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 a strong heat by the end of the summer for the vintage, uh, we, have, um, we have managed to keep the freshness of the vintage. Um, interesting thing uh, for 2016 vintage, you might not have been tasting a Montrachet um, for, this, uh, for this vintage because um, uh, the Morachet vineyard suffered a lot of, uh, of frost, and uh, actually uh, seven of the domains uh, of, uh, of uh, Morachet producer, including uh, uh, Lafon, uh, um, uh, Romane Conti, and, uh, and uh, others, um, Drouin, have been uh, um, putting together all their grapes and produced only two barrels of Morachet out of nine hectares of, uh, of uh, Grand Cru uh, Le Morachet. So you can imagine uh, that it is a very small uh, vintage. And, and uh, so uh, this is, uh, this is um, normally, uh, obviously, we should have produced much more wines than, uh, than this uh, only two barrels that actually are not uh, on the market. So it's only 600 bottles that have been produced and uh, aged uh, by Domaine Leflève uh, in, uh, in puy So um, now we're going to uh, go uh, a bit further uh, north um, towards, um, towards Ladois. Uh, Ladois, uh, it's a village. Uh, if we want to locate the village of Ladois, uh, it's just up and off uh, from Beaune, uh, on the hill of Corton. Uh, so you know Alos Corton, you know Pernan Vergelès, you might not know very well uh, Ladois. The village is composed from uh, Ladois and uh, Serigny. Serigny is not a cru, hein. it's not like the other village where you have Ossé du Rest or um, um, puligny Montrachet. Serigny is, uh, is, uh, is actually a village which is um, on the, on nearby the, the station, uh, train station and they merged together. So uh, you won't find a Serigny Premier Cru or a Serigny Grand Cru, uh, just for your uh, information. So if you look 
uh, at the map that we have here. As you see, uh, Ladoua is close to, um, to Alos Corton, and we are right on the hill um, after, the, after the, the famous Corton uh, vineyards uh, with what we call uh, uh, a monopoly. So it means that uh, this, uh, this uh, vineyard is only produced by one domain, um, uh, Maratre du Breuil. And for uh, uh, interesting matter, we, uh, the winemaker was here yesterday at the, at the Chateau du Clos de Vougeot, at the chapitre of Saint Vincent. He has just been promoted to a commander. Um, so I don't know if it's related uh, to this. I'm not sure. Um, but, but actually, uh, it's, a, it's a, a nice family of, uh, of winemakers of uh, La Doua Sereni. So um, let's take uh, the small bottle. Don't, uh, don't uh, make a mistake. Uh, this is uh, La Doua 2016. I uh, have my glasses on, so no problem. I see that it's a good bottle. On on peut nager dans le verre, vous croyez en nager, oh, C'est marqué sur C'est en nager, très bien. So, um, so the, the, uh, back to, uh, to the appellation La Doua Serigny, small appellation, hein, 250 acres, mainly, uh, mainly red uh, on, uh, on, uh, on some white, 75% of, uh, of red. So here we are really in the center of the, of the limestone. Um, uh, a lot of, uh, of vineyard in, uh, in La Doua Serigny uh, has been um, uh, also transformed into some quarries to extract, um, to extract uh, limestone. And you will see that um, uh, it has helped to, uh, to uh, produce some of the uh, monuments around. Um, the stone is very, very uh, uh, thought after. Uh, but obviously the vineyard is also very uh, thought after. Um, so the, the nage, uh, it uh, it's, um, means a soil erosion um, from a Gaulish language. Um, it's a monopole of uh, almost five acres. Um, so the color of the Ladoua um, has a bright garnet and uh, Publish highlights. Bouquet is uh, full of strawberry, cherry, jam, spicy, cloves, a lot of uh, coffee and cocoa notes. And the mouth, the wine is uh, tender, quite supple, round, very velvety. Um, with just the right amount of, of tannins. Um, so um, I think this is also a very nice approach towards uh, Pinot Noir. Um, very elegant, good balance, good fruit. Um, you have the information on the screen, I believe, uh, about uh, the, uh, the aging. Um, it has been aged 15 months with 20% uh, of, of new wood. Um, and uh, you know uh, maceration of 20 uh, days, which is uh, quite usual. Um, this small appellation, so a few bottles, only 6,000 bottles, produced in this beautiful 2016 uh, vintage. We can drink with a, a meal on the Sunday, the barbecue, for instance. Ah, it interesting. Yes, I think. I like uh, very much with a, a grill. A grill? Because yeah. uh, we need all this discussion is very well, but we want to drink this wine. Yes. And we um, can drink with... A I love the fruitiness of the wine. Um, yeah. Very, uh, very elegant and, um, and um, you know, simple. But bright, it's, it's also uh, what we need to, to uh, enjoy in, uh, in Bourgogne. These are the wines to start with. It's very sappery. It's very, um, it's, uh, it's uh, mouth watering. Uh, and uh, and we, uh, we enjoy this, uh, this type of, uh, of wine. 
So um, back to Coach Chalonez now, as we will be um, now uh, testing the uh, uh, Ruy uh, Premier Cru. Uh, the Ruy Premier Cru uh, is um, coming from a, a beautiful chateau, uh, Chateau de Ruy, which is a, a kind of a middle age uh, chateau, a very French style with two towers in the middle of the vineyard. Not as nice as the Chateau du Clos de Bougeau, hein. uh, obviously, uh, but yet uh, quite, uh, quite a nice uh, chateau on Molem. Younger. Younger. Uh, Molem uh, is, uh, is an appellation um, that from is Cistercian. from the Cistercian uh, monks, absolutely, and the vineyard was uh, belonging to the Abbey of uh, Molem, built by Robert de Molem, founder of the Cistercian order and of the Abbey Cito in 1098. So we have uh, a lot of history uh, towards the wines. Uh, it's a climate of 12 acres, more or less. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, so, uh, it's, uh, it's a premier cru, and you uh, have the location here uh, on, the, on, the, on the map. I like the Ruyi. Ruyi is, uh, can be uh, both red, uh, red and white, unless uh, Montagny that we tested before, which is 100% white. Uh, the uh, Ruyi is maybe an appellation that you are not used to taste either. Um, but uh, we, uh, as, as you know, with the confrérie, we want to promote all the wines and all the appellations. So I'm a bit late for the tasting. I should have. Uh, opened this a bit before. I, I, I hope you kept the wines in, uh, in good uh, temperature condition. And uh, here we have had a, a beautiful summer day in, uh, in, uh, in the chateau. Uh, it's it has been almost 20, uh, 10 de 20 degrees uh, centigrade. Um, quite uh, uh, impressive uh, in um, in, uh, in the chateau and uh, all around the, the côte. Um, so just uh, a few words uh, on, uh, on this wine. Technical uh, features, obviously it's, uh, it's Pinot Noir. Uh, short aging. Um, the wine is... Uh, so we yet have a bit more structure on the wine than from the former uh, Pinot Noir, um, with uh, very precise notes. Uh, tannins are still present, um, and um, it means that the wine will age for um, another long time. Uh, we have a uh, um, nice, a lot of pepper into the wine, um, very rich, um, and a very, very interesting uh, length. So it's, uh, 648 in uh, in burgundy uh, and this time we have three minutes of uh, delay so it's fine and uh, now i want you to welcome uh, jean-michel galette who is the producer of the nuit saint georges premier cru l'ecaille um, that is going to join us um, on the on the table now um, avoir l'écran s'il vous plaît So welcome Jean-Michel we are here in the um, in the salon uh, des commanderies um, uh, you might not see maybe I can ask uh, the camera it was not uh, proposed before but can you please go to um, the um, uh, to uh, the paintings that we have here on the wall can it be possible to go here, oh, beautiful. Um, so you know uh, these paintings, some of you um, uh, uh, recognize um, uh, the painting from uh, Norman Rockwell. So this was uh, Clifford Wyman. Wyman. Clifford T. Wyman. Clifford T. Wyman. Uh, um, the, the Grand Pilier from the Commanderie d'Amérique during many, many years. And one of the famous uh, amateur of Burgundy in uh, America. So uh, we are really in the heart of the, of, uh, the Chateau du Claude Bougeot, but our art is also with you 
uh, today uh, live uh, from the from the US. So thank you so much, Jean-Michel, to be present. Uh, you are a member of the Confrery uh, for uh, a few years now, uh, and uh, you have been vinifying this uh, this wine from uh, uh, Maison Patriarche. Yes. So we have the small bottles in front of you. Let's grab the good bottle. L'écaille. C'est bien ça. <laughs> okay, should we say a few words about the, the vineyard? Oh, itself? bien sûr. Obviously. So L'écaille is one of the premier cru, first cru from uh, Nuit Saint-Georges, on the south part of the village, just near the famous uh, Saint-Georges, uh, which is one of the most famous fields maybe in this, uh, in this town. So we are on the, on the south part, I said, and uh, we are on the second third of the slope, so we have a nice uh, location, nice situation. Um, so we could say that the, the field is composed of uh, clay and limestones, and uh, the name of the field, the Kai, if you are looking for the translation, you will find the quails, uh, small birds. But in fact, le Kai means les cailloux in French. Uh, it's the contraction of les cailloux, so it's uh, small stones. It's funny because in uh, Nuit Saint-Georges, uh, we have uh, uh, a few uh, volatiles. Uh, we have les quails, um, we have les perdrix. Uh, les poulettes. And les poulettes. Uh, so uh, this is this is a, a very Ar Aryan type of uh, of uh, um, of uh, village. And uh, today, as you see, uh, we have had the auction of the hospice de Nuit Saint Georges at the Château du Clos de Bougeau, and the prices have been increasing from 30 percent, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, and with uh, with obviously a lot of wines uh, from Nuit Saint Georges. So if you have some Nuit Saint Georges. In your cellar, you are lucky, and you are even more lucky if you have this beautiful decay. And Jean Michel, you can uh, keep on uh, talking about this wine, please. Okay, so the aging process has been about 18 months in, uh, in barrels. We had one third of new barrels, and the rest of uh, barrels of three years. <coughs> so we have a very nice color, deep purple touch like a uh, red brick. The smell is quite intense. We are on the dark berries, cooked fruits, a touch of chocolate. Wine is quite um, heady, very well perfumed. We have uh, once again the cooked berries, dark berries, a touch of paper, and uh, it's also minty. Very well balanced, long after taste. If I have to select uh, some food with it, maybe I will recommend. Uh, no beef Wellington, beef inside brioche with a chanterelle mushroom sauce. Yes, very nice. I like that the type of wine. Nuit Saint Georges is a little bit severe, but I like that. I think it, uh, it's a beautiful uh, uh, Nuit Saint Georges. Nuit Saint Georges, big structure, great structure. Like that. Thank you, Jean Michel. Um, I think uh, this is a very typical uh, Nuit Saint Georges wine, right. um, and uh, we have uh, uh, the, the nice uh, liquorice and uh, spices, a lot of volume, um, a very harmonious uh, and elegant wine. Uh, for can you talk a bit about the Maison Patriarche? Yeah, the Maison Patriarche is uh, installed in Bonn since 225 years in a former convent, convent from the 17th century. Uh, we are growing negotiant means we don't have any vineyards, but we bought our, our wines from uh, wine producers around. We have, at this time, about 50 wine producers from all over Burgundy working with us. And so we, buy, uh, we bought wines in barrels. We make ourselves the process of aging and bottling. 
and we sign the bottles with our label. So if you have the opportunity to come to visit, the cellars are the largest one in Burgundy with five kilometers of gallery and 20,000 square meters uh, of surface underground. That's something to see. Excellent. Uh, well, we hope uh, you can all come to, uh, to Burgundy and, uh, and, and discover, obviously, uh, uh, this, uh, this very unique uh, cellar. How many visitors do you have uh, um, visiting every year? In a normal year, I would in say. In a normal year, yes. Uh, it's about 45,000 people coming from all over the world. 45,000? Yes. Wow, you're not, far, the you're not far Claude from Rougeau. the Chateau <laughs> du Claude Rougeau. Um, um, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very impressive to be able to, uh, to visit uh, such, uh, such a vineyard. So um, now, many thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks I don't know if we have some questions uh, online uh, about uh, the, the wine. Doesn't look like uh, we do have some questions. Maybe we'll uh, try to uh, answer them uh, afterwards. And um, we 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 are now going to uh, to test. Um, so uh, I have. Uh, we are very happy to to welcome today uh, uh, Eva Ray. Uh, Eva, uh, please come on the table. Merci. So Eva is the uh, owner of uh, Domaine Bertania. You are you, our closest neighbor. Exactly, yeah. I'm so excited to be here tonight and share this tasting with all of you. So uh, Eva has asked uh, so that we switch a little bit uh, the tasting, um, in, in the order of the tasting. Uh, so uh, we obviously, um, she's, uh, she's, uh, um, she's uh, our guest, so she decides what to do. So um, we are going to test both Claude de la Perrière together. So I ask you if you can um, to take your uh, Claude de la Perrière 2016, uh, which is uh, actually um, um, the one wine we were supposed to taste. And then you skip uh, the two uh, different uh, Claude Rougeau that we were supposed to drink and take the 2015 so that we test uh, as um, a vertical tasting uh, the two wines. I think it's a very interesting idea to, uh, to be able to test um, uh, both wines. We will go back afterwards to 2016 vintage, mm -hmm. but I think this was a brilliant, uh, a brilliant idea. So I let you pour the wines and I let you discuss. So um, <coughs> um, I'm, I'm Eva from the Membertania. My family owns this uh, winery since 82. And the previous owner's name was Batania. That's why it's still called the Membertania. So we're very spoiled. We're just having our winery in Vujo, so very close by to the chateau. And most of our vineyards are in Vujo as well. So tonight, um, I'm really spoiled to be able to introduce two of our wines from the same appellation uh, called Vujo Claude La Perrière. So this appellation you do not find on most maps. Um, it's a climate which is mostly on the appellation of Vujo Le Petit Vujo, and it's the upper part of it. So um, it's, um, um, I'm just uh, looking, if I see it here, it's the same here, uh, where you see the yellow spot. It's part of the Petit Vujo but it's because it's very rarely on other maps. Um, it's a monopole, which means we're the only owner in this appellation. And it's one of my favorite appellations because um, at the back of the vineyards, you have the rocks. And above the rocks on the um, west side, and the, no, on the north side, you have the vineyards from uh, Musigny, uh, Musigny Cru. On the south side, we have the beautiful vineyards from the Clos Rougeau. So it's really well surrounded, but it's also protected by the rocks on the back. Um, it is also the vines which are always, or the vineyards which are always in flower first. Um, it's mostly the vineyards which is harvest first as well. Um, it's nicely protected, uh, has a super deepness of red and brown clay and smaller stand, limestones. So if we can start with 2016, the reason why I like to start with 2016 is because the 2016s are a little bit more open um, than the 2015. The 2015 is more a wine for lying down. 
So 2016, as our nurse told you before, was a terrible, difficult vintage, very upsetting um, vintage in the beginning of the year because we had this terrible first uh, end of uh, April. Um, and uh, we lost uh, some vineyards 100% and other vineyards up to 60%, and um, also quite a lot in um, Visual uh, Claude La Perrière, which has a size from about 2.2 hectares. Um, three quarter of the vineyards has been planted in 68, and the other quarter was <coughs> been planted in 2012, so it's still quite young. Mm. The 2016 are already tasting quite nice, and nicely open, even with the leak of, um, of a nice summer, it's been very, very rainy. Um, the vineyards were very difficult to walk. Illnesses were coming in very quickly. Um, and um, also, uh, these vineyards needed to be walked by hand so much more than in a normal vintage, uh, because after the first, you know, everything was growing, not at the same time. And um, it was a very intensely walked vintage 2016, and then also with the summer being quite difficult, we were a little bit worried that the ripeness wouldn't be as good. But luckily before the harvest, which was um, close to the end of September, 27th of December, um, we had uh, some a little bit of rain before because it was quite dry after in summertime. And then um, uh, we had fantastic weather before the harvest which finally made the 2016 which were left over to be um, really a wine which beautiful tannins, um, a nice elegant, uh, nice fruits, um, not very much acidity, which is the reason why this vineyard already opens up nicely today, especially if you have the time to decant it beforehand. Um, that's always a good advantage with younger vintages. So Santi. I hope you enjoy the wine. Just have to turn the class at the right sentence. So this wine, which is quite typical, has beautiful red fruit flavors, um, spices, and a lot of herbal flavors. Uh, it's quite smooth. Um, also has some licorice curd flavors um, on the end of the mouth. It's um, actually a wonderful wine uh, with all sorts of red meat um, dishes, but also with black chocolate. With all kind of chocolate dishes, it's just um, divine. Thank you so much, uh, Eva. I think we all enjoy this wine, and actually the vineyards of, uh, of uh, Les Perrières, um, comes the Perrières, the name of Les Perrières comes from a uh, query, Mm -hmm. the place where uh, the limestone were, was extracted and it was extracted to build this cheminée this and, uh, and uh, uh, all, the uh, all the chateau. So we are almost in a kind of uh, mise en abîme. I don't know how to say that in English, uh, but uh, it means that uh, it's, uh, it's a piece of art for us to, uh, to taste the wine, uh, really overlooking the vineyard just beside us. Um, and uh, and um, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a privilege. So I, I want to share with you this uh, because it's always nice to taste the wine um, in the location where it comes from. Um, and we are lucky enough now to, um, to start um, uh, tasting of wines around the, the, around the, the, the Clos Bougeau. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, you know, the, as I say, the next door neighbor uh, to, to the just chateau. After the wall. Just after the, the wall. wall. And, and, just after wall. Yeah. and, and, uh, and so uh, this is a, a typical, uh, um, I, I think uh, Domaine Bertania uh, has been uh, um, proposing wines to the Tad Vinage uh, for many, many years. Yeah, for a very long time. I, d I remember um, uh, at the time when I got here in 88, I started um, uh, at the family winery and, um, and we do also have a wine shop uh, at the winery and all the wines were with Tastavinage labels because it was so, so highly um, um, appreciated by people as well to, to buy especially wines with uh, Tastavinage label, yeah, it was um, 
So the, the, label has, uh, yeah. the label has changed a little bit. Um, actually, it has changed in uh, 2016. Uh, some of you might remember the very uh, uh, flourished uh, mm. label of the Tadwinage and uh, for the hundredth edition of the Tadwinage, we launched uh, this, uh, this glass, which is a special glass that you might um, be um, um, testing with uh, at home. It's, uh, it's only uh, available at the Chateau du Claude Bougeau. Um, and, uh, and we changed the label to, um, with to the label that you have in hand, which is uh, a bit more clear. Uh, so the label was created yeah. in which year, uh, Chagrin Maître? 1950? 1950, 18th of June 1950 was the first advinage. Yeah. So after um, uh, all more than uh, 60 years of, uh, of use, we could uh, change a little bit uh, the wine. So it's interesting to taste uh, both 2015 and, uh, and 2016 the side. Uh, yes, I think there is a, a beautiful continuity of these wines and with with a difference between vintage, but continuity and and uh, great, uh, uh, beautiful, great wine, great wine, and difference. Uh, I like very much uh, sixteen. Yes. What What do you prefer, uh, twenty sixteen? Both. No, I like. Uh, both. It's interesting uh, because uh, sixteen for uh, uh, the evening and. Uh, uh, 15 for uh, midday. Okay, well, okay. Uh, so Perfect. we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much, uh, Eva, for thank your you. presence. You, you were not so far from here, um, but, uh, but it's always good to have you at the Chateau. You know the road, and you are always welcome uh, at, uh, at the Chateau du Claude Bougeot. So my friends, I hope uh, you are not too lost. Uh, what uh, we are going to test now is the Claude Vougeau Grand Cru 2016 from Domaine Manuel Olivier. Um, and uh, um, so this is uh, the one uh, label that you have. Uh, so you, you can pick uh, the small bottle. I have to make sure uh, I'm not, uh, here we are. Claude Vougeot 2016. So I'm going to keep the, um, the Bertania uh, 2016 Claude La Perrière on my glass. I'm lucky enough to have some uh, 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 again in my, in my glass. And uh, I'm going to uh, test uh, this uh, Claude Vougeot. So Manuel Olivier, now you are familiar with him. Uh, he is uh, the one uh, that uh, has proposed the first wine that we have been tasting uh, at this uh, at this tasting the haute côte de nuit and uh, so uh, this is a clove Rougeau 2016 um, so um, maybe we can uh, uh, still uh, get a few information on the clo as you know um, the, the it's uh, since uh, around 2015 about 900 years ago that the Claude Rougeau was um, planted by uh, the, the, the monks of, uh, of Cito, and they own the vineyard uh, for uh, about uh, 700 years. So the location of the uh, vineyard, as you see with the yellow dot, is just uh, in the middle of, uh, of the clos. So a very, uh, very interesting uh, location. And you can see um, the vineyard, uh, we, we tested uh, the, the, the vines just beside before. Uh, so we are not lost. We are uh, in uh, about uh, 500 meters from the former wine that we have been uh, testing. But we are in Grand Cru. Um, so um, this is a um, different type of aging, different domain. Um, this has been aged. Fifty year, fifteen um, months in um, in new wood, um, with a very precise, uh, very elegant, um, very young, very no? young. The wine shows a uh, um, very nice aroma, uh, a lot of uh, a lo lot of, uh, of freshness, and uh, uh, we uh, enjoy the the wines uh, that we are having today. 
So I believe this is the last 2016 uh, that we have been uh, we are going to to taste. Um, going back to uh, going back to uh, to this uh, to this um, year, um, what I can recall is that uh, it is um, uh, very uh, all over the vineyard. It is a very interesting uh, vintage. White sun rays. They show a lot of freshness. They show a lot of length. Uh, definitely, uh, those are bottles that uh, you might be willing to uh, open uh, with friends, but you see that we can keep the wine for another few, ye few uh, years. Yes, we can. Um, so now we are going back um, out of the clo. Uh, with uh, with uh, a wine uh, les petits bougeaux so actually the vineyard is just above uh, Eva uh, Eva um, uh, vineyard um, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, 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 Vougeaux premier cru les petits bougeaux from domaine roux uh, we we've seen uh, Christian yesterday uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the winemaker and owner the of uh, Domaine Roux, père et fils, he was carrying the... Of the... Uh, of Saint-Aubin. Saint-Aubin. I believe. Um, you are right. And uh, <laughs> so Roux, père et fils, uh, owns this little block uh, of, uh, of Petit Vougeau. Um, just, uh, just uh, underneath uh, Eva's uh, vineyard. Um, so I'm going to open the bottle. So this is a wine from Côte de Nuit, made by a winemaker from Côte de Beaune. Let's see if this is a good idea. The color is a bit uh, more pale than the one that we have been tasting before. Um, yes, but it is 17. It, are you right? Um, so this is... Uh, <laughs> This is uh, not a detail, <laughs> uh, absolutely, um, and uh, and uh, obviously um, just uh, uh, to present uh, a bit the domain uh, Roux. It's a family, um, it's a family business, um, and they vinify obviously uh, separately uh, each uh, single uh, vineyard. Um, 27, 2017. So it's uh, it's. Uh, it's um, it's a great vintage, as yeah. as uh, every vintage in Burgundy, as you know. Uh, <laughs> um, very classic of what Burgundy is. Uh, great freshness and delicate fruit. Um, um, it's uh, the wines from 2017 are not that big, um, but uh, they show a lot of elegance and. Um, and a great balance with acidity um, and uh, a lot of flavor and um, very good texture. Um, the finish for me is, uh, is very, uh, very long, deep, um, and there's a lot of, um, of vibration uh, uh, into the to the vintage. The, this wine is, is very special to the domain because it's um, it's the first to be um, um, taste uh, and. Uh, it's very intense, fresh, uh, crunchy fruit. Um, so I think it's it's uh, it also uh, enables us to uh, to present uh, the 2016 uh, 2017 uh, vintage uh, that will, of course, age very well. <laughs> Chagrin, yes, uh -huh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, so this is not a comparison uh, game, uh, obviously, um, uh, and this is not the same uh, vintage than uh, 20, uh, uh, 2016, but we see... And not the same winemaker. And the not the same bad winemaker, but there's a link into those wines, in the style, and we are really into uh, the, the Claude Bougeot uh, appellation, so we are lucky with, uh, with this wine. The same soil? Same soil. The same sun. Same sun. But not the same people. Making not the, the same wine. people, exactly. Um, so uh, Very in important. interesting to, uh, to look. We are really uh, in the golden triangle of uh, Bourgogne. Yep. I don't know what the golden triangle of Bourgogne actually is, but I wanted to say that now. Uh, it's, uh, no, I mean, when you are 
between uh, the Musini, uh, the Clovujo, and the Echezo, um, it's not a bad location, I would say. Uh, and just, uh, uh, you know, Les Amoureuses, just underneath. So um, I'm also uh, uh, going to fall in love with uh, this uh, Vujo uh, Premier Cru. Les Petits Vujo. Petit mais costaud, we say in France. Faut dire ça, Edouard Ouais Ok. Um, so, um, we, we, we are going to, um, to um, pursue this, uh, this tasting, uh, and I hope you're, um, you're um, enjoying the, the speed of the tasting. I don't know if uh, people ask for a more pass or a more piece. Um, but uh, you know, once we are into it, it's uh, it's a way to uh, to enjoy. And uh, so the next wine we are going to taste, uh, we are going to skip the Clos Vougeau, uh, Le Vougeau Premier Cru Clos de la Perrière. All of you must have tasted it, otherwise you keep it and you have it for the aperitif. It's uh, maybe noon uh, in some of uh, uh, of. Um, Some of you might be noon or one. Uh, I don't know with uh, with jet lag, um, but uh, for us it's perfect time for tasting. Yes. But for for you too, uh, actually we prefer in, uh, in Burgundy to taste wines early. Uh, I mean uh, at 10 in the morning rather 10? than yeah 10 is good. No, I prefer 11. 11, <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, uh, at the test of vintage, uh, next, uh, next uh, uh, Friday, we're going to start to taste at 10. At 10. Okay, okay. so, uh, well, we can wake up a little earlier, so yeah. I have to right. get your butt, <laughs> butt tastes uh, ready uh, for this. So, the on the next wine, I'm very pleased to uh, introduce you to François-Xavier Dufouleur. Please uh, come to us, uh, François-Xavier. Bienvenue, cher confrère. Cher Arnaud, cher grand maître. François. Dear Megan Bonjour. friends. So uh, uh, we Bonsoir. just need the camera, please, to, uh, to focus on, uh, on François-Xavier. Uh, technical uh, little, here we are. <laughs> so François-Xavier, you okay. know well uh, the Commanderie d'Amérique. I, I, I believe you even been uh, into some of the chap chapitres. Uh, exactly, I, I perfectly remember uh, 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 14 July party, especially. And, uh, in uh, Fairfield uh, County? Uh, no? Exactly, in Connecticut, and, uh, and I was quite surprised to, to realize uh, how um, full of Burgundy these guys were. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it was, uh, for a, a teenager um, uh, of my age, uh, quite a big experience. Excellent. And, and uh, François-Xavier is a compagnon d'honneur of the, of the confrérie. Uh, join our ranks and you will see him on stage uh, when you come to the château. Uh, you, so you have a, a family um, uh, estate. Can you tell us about the estate? Yes, uh, the Dufoula family is uh, quite rooted in Nuit Saint-Georges. Uh, it's one of the oldest family of the village and uh, you can still find a, a few different uh, uh, Dufoula operation. Uh, our operation is a Dufoula frère uh, because my grandfather and his two brothers decided to continue the story together in the 1930s with this name. And we are just in the entry gate of the city uh, coming from north, uh, from Von Romani. So it's, uh, it's definitely a, a Nuit Saint-Georges uh, rooted domain, very small, uh, small uh, family home uh, domain plus winery, since we, we also hacked as negotiation buying some grapes. And, uh, and the white tonight is a, is a wine from the domain, and uh, to be honest, uh, a wine of my heart, a little bit, because as a Chevalier member, of course, uh, we are so happy and, uh, and proud to be able to produce a Flot de Bougeot. Uh, and so be uh, in kind of a direct uh, uh, link with the conferry uh, activities. Good connection, huh? <laughs> the vineyard is not too far from here. Exactly, no, no, it's, uh, it's a walk distance still, so we can, uh, we can still uh, have, the, have the grapes back in Nuit Saint-Georges easily and, uh, and, uh, and make the wine uh, at our place. So I see that you highlight uh, this old map Uh, from the Claude Vougeau, it's, uh, it's uh, thanks to you that uh, the conferee uh, reprint this old map that uh, was, uh, I think, uh, already established by the monks before French revolutions, because as you all know that uh, Claude Vougeau is uh, one single appellation, uh, officially, 
and, uh, and it has gained its fame uh, as the one single wine, but uh, everybody knows also that the geology of uh, inside the walls is, uh, is very variable, uh, and uh, you have uh, very different places, and uh, uh, we know that uh, monks used to name all the parts of the Clovujo differently, and uh, that's the reason why we have decided to highlight uh, the vineyard where uh, a wine is coming from, so, uh, uh, which is quite unusual. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a nice way to, to show you that uh, in Bourgogne, as you see, uh, as you know, uh, when things are simple, it's still not simple, it's still complicated again. <laughs> so uh, this wine is from the Gros Maupert tree, it's the uh, upper side of the clo. Um, it's a strange name, uh, Maupert tree. I don't know if you have been studying Latin. Uh, yes, I <laughs> have been a very bad student, but maybe gourmet. It no? uh, yes, but very. Intense. Okay, okay, okay. So I've been I, I've been uh, uh, looking uh, a little bit about the meaning of this old French name. Um, Pertuis means the path, just 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 easily, and uh, Mo means just a bad path, not, not meaning that it's a path uh, to. Uh, through uh, to the habits uh, uh, through in, inside the uh, so it means that there is kind of a big uh, a hole or big fall in the in the in the vineyard at this place so it's it's not telling you a lot about uh, the terroir itself but it's a uh, it's it's a funny name and it has nothing great because you just have neighboring this parcel uh, petit maupertuis which means that it's also a very nice vineyard of course but it's a small uh, hole uh, in opposition to a big one. Um, so this is in the upper side of the clove, and, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a quite uh, old vineyard now. And um, uh, maybe can we open the, the yes, wine itself? Uh, can we have uh, uh, new glasses, please? Uh, uh, on the, uh, thank you so much. Um, Here we are. Thank you so much. Thank you. The bouteilles are not easy to open. The bottles are a bit difficult to open. I hope all of you managed so to open those small bottles. I'm more used to open magnums than uh, <laughs> bottles, but uh, I will do my this best is here. A, this is a minimum. <laughs> you have the magnum and we have the minimum. Okay, so we are in a 2015 vintage, a very uh, great year in Burgundy. Um, but uh, with a great terroir li like, uh, like we have here, it's, uh, uh, I think we we had to, to be patient a little bit as well, uh, because um, our Clovujo uh, always need time to, uh, to have the tannins uh, uh, softened and, uh, and the power uh, um, uh, under control. Uh, uh, so still a nice, fresh red fruit. Prefer to drinking. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> difficult to spit um, such but, a wine. Uh, I think that you still uh, have a lot of potential for this wine. Um, uh, the best is yet to come. A little bit like uh, my small daughter, who is the same age, I think. Oh. Uh, and um, and uh, it's um, it's a wine that, um, with the time, brings um, a lot of uh, uh, power and richness, and um, definitely. Uh, uh, the, the companion and, and, and the friend of your table, so it's um, it's a very great experience. Can you talk a bit about the vinification process uh, on the wine and how many bottles you've been produced on this? Uh so the number of bottles is unfortunately quite uh, small because it's uh, it's in between two and three barrel every year. Very small. Uh, one barrel is about three hundred bottles. Three hundred bottles, exactly. And. Um, uh, I think one, one important uh, choice that the winemaker still can make is uh, to uh, uh, remove the stems or not. And um, considering the, the, the specific um, uh, um, plots that we have, and, uh, and uh, we, we make the decision not to, uh, uh, to, to, to distinct all the, all the harvest, and, uh, and I have then a very soft extraction of, of, of the wines, and the tannins are coming quite, quite easily. Uh, it's funny because this is maybe one, uh, one of the things that can make different Clos Bougeot difference. Uh, we know that some, some, some uh, domains prefer to be in, uh, in wall, uh, wall bunches, and uh, this is uh, uh, always very funny to me to, to, to have the, the difference uh, in the glass at the end. So wall bunch means that you take the, the, the grapes and you put it directly into the tank, um, whereas when you distem, you just take the berry and you crush them and you put it into the tank. And this and the tannins of uh, of the stem 
can bring uh, more structure and also the vinification process is a bit different. So this is all about Mr. the style of uh, some exactly. domains that will um, um, take a wall bench or um, or uh, uh, this team uh, process. It can also depend on the year. 2015 is maybe to me uh, the, the very best vintage of the decade. Um, and and uh, we see all the tannin structure, the power of the wine. Um, as you say, uh, your daughter is seven years old. Um, and, uh, and I think... Uh, a lot uh, of energy to, a lot to, of energy. to get under control <laughs> still. <laughs> and this is so thank you for sharing this because um, you can imagine uh, producing uh, two barrels of wines. Um, it means um, uh, not, not a lot of uh, wine uh, possibility. And it's also great that you propose the wines to the Tastevinage. And it was a great honor for us that the wine was uh, accepted by the Tastevinage and also poured at uh, one of the chapitres. Uh, so it was a... It is a, a micro vinification. It is, it is like that, yes. And, uh, and drinking the wine where it was born, that's uh, the, the best way to... To end it. We really <laughs> enjoy this and thank you so much. Thank you so much Xavier. and uh, have and a great uh, tasting then. Um, yes. This is obviously um, uh, a great moment for us. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, uh, we're going to welcome a young winemaker on, on, the, on this table, Edouard Labbé. Welcome, Edouard. Welcome, Arnaud. Comment ça va? Very sorry to be bon so. Bonsoir, bon uh, Yeah. First of all, very sorry to be so casually uh, dressed, but uh, I just came back from uh, Paris. So how was the, the, the party yesterday? I mean, the rugby game was obviously very nice. And, and the, the party? <laughs> uh, very long, very long, uh, not so much sleep, but um, I'm thrilled to be here. So I don't know if you guys know, uh, you know, we, uh, we play uh, rugby, we don't play uh, football here uh, in, uh, in uh, France and in Europe. And um, yesterday, France won and Edouard was uh, a big part of the victory. No? I mean, I guess uh, so. Uh, my, my voice, my voice can tell. I ah. guess, but uh, my voice and the, the lines on my face is, I guess. But uh, no, it was a good time, very good time. Yeah, fantastic. So, so Edouard, um, you are also uh, our next door neighbor. We have all, a lot of friends uh, uh, from Vujo, and uh, and I <coughs> think uh, everybody online knows about Chateau de la Tour. Um, this is a family estate since. Since 1889, since the, when the, the Club Joe was uh, sold, because until then it was owned by one single owner, and it's been sold, and uh, this is where my ancestors uh, bought some plots inside the Club Joe, and obviously the chateau, which is a couple of meters downstairs. Interesting things that yeah. um, um, 1889, uh, the uh, Ouvrard family was uh, owning the wall of the Club Joe, the 50 hectares. Mm -hmm. And there was this auction in 1889. Uh, the, the chateau by itself was purchased by Léon's Bouquet. And Léon's Bouquet is buried. He's also our next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> He's buried with his wife, which is, with, with, um, uh, who um, uh, passed away in 1920. He passed away in 1913. And is uh, the... the um, uh, the person that did restore the chateau uh, to its former glory. And uh, sorry for this little parenthesis, but I think it's interesting. And now, <coughs> you know, at the Chateau du Claude Bougeot, we restored uh, his, uh, his dining room. Um, and that is in this dining room, uh, La Table de Léonce, where Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron did their last <coughs> official dinner uh, at the Chateau du Claude Bougeot. Uh, in uh, on the third of uh, November last year, yep. so we were very yep. privileged to welcome, um, and they have been both inducted as a grand officier du Tadvin de vin uh, by grand maître. Maybe yeah. you can say a word, cher grand maître, about uh, this moment. Uh, it was a, a great honor for uh, all Burgundy and for our confrérie uh, to welcome uh, two chef d'état. Uh, our president and the chancelier uh, from uh, Germany. And uh, it was the first time we have two important people, two leaders, in the same time. We had induced um, German uh, chancelier in the past, Mr. Willy Brandt and Mr. 
Helmut Kohl. Helmut Kohl. Helmut Kohl. And uh, we had a French president like General de Gaulle and uh, François Hollande, but never in the same time. For us, it was the first time we had these two important people. And it was a great honor for us. A great moment country. that you might have seen some pictures in the last uh, magazine of the Confrérie. Um, and, uh, and so now the table de Léonce is, uh, is, uh, is open, um, I think, six days a, a week at the Chateau du Clos de Bougeot for visitors to, um, to uh, visit the chateau, taste the, the... I think we have to put a label on the chairs. Oh yes, uh, yeah, the to chair remember. chair of the president chair of and the <laughs> chair of the chancelier. <laughs> Uh, and, and so you are welcome, uh, you members uh, of the Confrérie, to, to come to, uh, to um, enjoy the Table de Léonce, which is a, a tasting lunch at the Chateau, uh, proposed by our chef Alexandra Bouvray. Uh, and uh, it's something new that we, uh, we created uh, during uh, uh, the COVID period, because we could not make any banquets anymore. Um, and so uh, this is the end of my parenthesis. Uh, let's open this little bottle and let's test the last wine of the, of the evening. Claude Vougeot, Grand Cru, uh, 2014, Vieille Vigne. Mm -hmm. So, should I speak a bit about this? Please, yeah. please. So, um, obviously, we are uh, with you. Uh, the only ones located inside the wall of the Club Bougeot. Uh, and we keep unifying like the, like the, monk, like the monks did you know, back in the days. And we also are the, the biggest honors. Uh, and for us, it really is uh, important because we have uh, big plots uh, and located in different um, you know, locations in, inside, the, inside, the, inside the Club Bougeot. We have 0 0.5 hectares on the on the on the upper part. Sorry, uh, yeah, exactly as you can as you can see on the maps, you know, with the with the yellow dots, and you know this those different location brings I would say consistency also to the wines we produce because we have the different you know diversity. Club is so diverse, and that what makes makes it so special. But the cuvée, so we do two main cuvées, the cuvée classic, which is going to be what I call a blend of parcellaire, a blend of you know. Uh, different vinification from the different plots, but the Vieille Vigne, the old vines, is uh, sorry, is um, is really the, the the plot that you can see really at the at the heart of the Club Bougeot. and these are um, uh, sorry, these are um, vines that for the oldest one were planted in 1910, so that you know uh, went through the the decades, the ages, the wars, um, and therefore they are. Uh, you can imagine how. Um, what kind of grapes they give, you know, very concentrated, you know, um, with a deep root system uh, that, 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 you know, keeps the energy from the, from the soil and, and gives it to the, to the, to the, to the grapes. Um, and, and yeah, and so compared to the one you had before, we, we like to work quite the, the, the other way around. We like to work a lot, the, the whole cluster. Uh, it's been part of our um, DNA since my father started in the late eighties. I think it was his first vintage and for him, it was to um, replicate the wines that he, that were produced before the wars, you know. Uh, um, and to me, it brings lots of memories from back then, when when I was a kid, you know, when uh, we could steal, you know, the, the glasses at the end of the meal and, and sip the glasses hidden from the from the grandparents, and and those those flavors of you know of those um, of herbal, very noble herbal flavors, m mint, you know, licorice. And also the the energy that that pops from from the wine. Um, I mean, I usually don't really like to speak about the wine itself because I think it's very personal, you know. And everyone has his own, uh, you know, personality and and feeling about the wine. Uh, but it's all, it's more about how we what we what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and definitely the whole cluster is for us. Uh, yeah, as I said, part of our DNA on on the wines we're trying to build. So 2014, yeah. um, can you tell a, a little bit about the, the season and the, and the vintage uh, by itself? Absolutely, yeah. The, uh, 2014 was um, a bit of a roller coaster uh, vintage uh, in a way that uh, uh, there was some frost in some locations, mo mostly in the south of, of, of the, the Côte d'Or, uh, but um, a, a spring that, that followed that was quite, um, 
quite warm, you know, quite sunny, so quite easy. And then a, a, a summer that went the, the opposite, uh, rainy, cold. Uh, but fortunately, we had this month of you know, late August, September, very warm again. And that, that managed to, to bring back the ripeness and the maturity. And therefore, we have, a, I would say, a, yeah, what we call a very uh, burgundy DNA uh, vintage, you know, uh, and a wine that the wines that we like to, to do, you know, uh, very precise, very uh, um, made of finesse. Uh, and um, so very seductive, I mean, very appealing vintage uh, at the end. Um, so, yeah, when you look at 2021, you wonder that you, you those kind of vintages, you kind of, uh, you miss it. You miss mm. it somehow. But, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, so that's the, that's the one million dollar question of when to, when to drink, you know, uh, the wines. Um, Is the price of the bottle one million dollars? No. No, hopefully not. <laughs> Unfortunately not. No, but it's, uh, you know, I always get this question. I always say, you know, buy six bottles and you open one every three years and you find a solution. But uh, I think it's more the moment when you want to open it. Uh, to me, there's no, I mean, there's no such thing as drinking a one too young or, or anything, you know, uh, now you, you just want to piece yourself and, and you go for it. And now 14 is, I think it starts to be a good time. You might wait a bit, but. Uh, I think it's very interesting to drink now. Yeah. Uh, Edouard, there is something I, I, uh, we did not prepare, but I think it's interesting. Um, you are aging now something very special in your, uh, in your winery. Uh, a wine from 2020 vintage that has been produced by 25 different uh, uh, grapes, uh, producers. Um, mm. It's a Clos Bougeot, um that uh, you have been uh, unifying. Mm -hmm. Can you t tell us a bit of, uh, about this? And I'm going to show you, you might not have seen uh, the, the label ah. that we're going ah. uh, to have. And, so and there is some grapes coming from Francois Xavier Vineyards. There is some grapes coming uh, uh, from uh, uh, Domaine, um, the Domaine uh, Chateau de la Tour. And uh, this is something that we did to um, uh, help the monks mm. of uh, Cito, the Cistercians. How many barrels? So two and a half. Two and a half barrels. Two, two and a half barrels, thanks to the generosity of, uh, yeah, of the producers of the Club Bougeot. Uh, and uh, yeah, we had the chance to, thanks to you, huh, but uh, we had the chance to uh, to have these barrels in our cellar. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so now I'm gonna just gonna show you the the um, the label. Uh, yeah. This is uh, Claude Vougeot Grand Cru. This label has been. Um, it took 60 hours to produce uh, in the in the um, in the uh, style of the Cistercian. It has gold leaf on it. Uh, and it will be uh, put, uh, this has been uh, produced by the last school of enluminure nice. of, uh, of France that respects the tradition of, uh, of Burgundy. And you see the monks that grow the vineyard and uh, the little uh, tanks where they are busy um, yeah. uh, preparing uh, the vinification. You have the Abbey of Cito on one side and you have the Chateau du Clos de Vougeot on the, on the other side. This is uh, something very uh, um, uh, narrative um, in the way of, uh, of the Cistercian. And this cuvée de l'Abbey de Cito uh, is going to be auctioned uh, in a dinner that we're going to held here at the Chateau du Clos de Vougeot mm. on the 23rd of April. Some of you might be in, uh, in Bourgogne at this time uh, because of the, uh, of the Grand Conseil d'Amérique, just before the day uh, before, it will be a dinner shared by Aubert de Villene uh, and uh, Guillaume Poitrinal, who is uh, president of the Heritage Foundation of France, together with uh, uh, Père Abbé de Cito, the, the uh, father uh, abbot of, uh, of Cito. Um, so, um, and we will be able to test the wine before the dinner uh, at the chateau and uh, the label that you see this one label is uh, gonna be um, uh, used the original one on a nabucodonosor so um, nabucodonosor is about three gallons 15 liters of wine a bottle that is gonna be auctioned uh, during the dinner only for the people present 
at the dinner. Um, obviously, the rest of the wines will be auctioned uh, online uh, through Sotheby's. Uh, so if uh, some of you are interested, it's uh, obviously a charity. And the idea of the charity is to restore one of the very important monuments of uh, the Abbey of Cito called Le Definitoire, where all the monks of, of the uh, father from the different Abbey of Cito were gathering um, in, uh, in uh, the Middle Age. So this um, is just for your uh, uh, sake. I think it's interesting to see um, those wines. We all are hair, hairs of the monks. Um, we can't say descendants, uh, hopefully. Uh, but since we have this vibration at the Chateau du Claude Rougeau, we wanted to highlight uh, this this uh, cuvee that is uh, very special and that um, uh, we are going to uh, to uh, to show um, uh, on the 23rd of uh, April. So Grand Maître, this is uh, more. We, it's it's uh, 7:30 in France, so uh, we are right on time. Perfect timing. Um, we might have uh, some comments. Maybe we uh, we can uh, ask uh, Peter to give us. Uh, yes, uh, I think. Well, just one word. I think it was a, a very good and in interesting uh, tasting uh, for with great wines and especially great to Clos Vougeau and Vougeau. And uh, now I think we will continue for uh, with that, not tasting, but drinking uh, one or two uh, great bottles. I think... Uh, Entire uh, bottles. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure all of you are with friends uh, or with family. Some of you have purchased a few of the, of the small uh, boxes. So I'm sure you're going to open decent bottles now since you have been finishing uh, your, um, your works. I hope you have been uh, enjoying this educational program. Um, once again, this is one of the role of the confrérie uh, is to uh, promote, uh, enjoy, and share uh, great wines of Burgundy. Uh, as I said, um, you know, in 1934, the cellars were full of wines. In uh, 2022, it's not the case anymore. I think we've done a, a good job. Uh, and you have done a, a good Jeff. job uh, overseas, uh, but <coughs> still, uh, it's important to discover appellations such as Ruilly, such as Montagny, such as Haute-Côte, such as Nuit Saint-Georges, you all know, obviously. The Ladois was very interesting, uh, and this is our role. Uh, remember that the Grand Cru of Burgundy is only 2% of the production, and you have a lot of great wines to discover all over Burgundy. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what we've been testing. We will be uh, maybe opening a few of them now. Uh, Peter, uh, are you online? I am online, and uh, what an enjoyable way to spend the afternoon. Uh, thank you again, Arnaud and Vincent, and all of the winemakers for making this possible. Not only was it fun, it was very educational, Great way to start the day. We still have the evening to enjoy more Burgundy wines. Also, thank your technical crew. The, uh, the broadcast was excellent. Uh, the Zoom works very well. It's not as good as being there. And we definitely look forward to being there soon in April at the Grand Conseil. See you then. Until then, thank you again very much. See you next April. Thank you so much, Peter. Maybe I would like to ask uh, all the winemakers to join us behind the, uh, behind the cheminée um, and also the team of the, of the chateau, uh, uh, Alicia, Véronique, Jean-Baptiste, um, so as to uh, just give you um, our, our original and, uh, as you know, um, uh, maybe you can uh, enlarge uh, the... Uh, fantastic. So my friends, as you know, yeah. this is a way to greet uh, you guys um, uh, overseas and uh, all this fantastic team and the uh, great moment that we spent together. So, les mains en l'air, s'il vous plaît. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Un, deux. La, 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 la,
la lèvre, la la la, la la la, la la la. On a fait sauter les plombs. Oui. Thank you so much, my friends. Enjoy uh, Bourgogne. And now we will. Enjoy the good time. See you uh, in April at the Château du Clos de Bougeau and for all the great programs we're proposing. Merci les amis. Merci. Et à bientôt. Merci. Bravo. Merci. Bye bye, Pierre. Good evening for nous. Uh, for right. you. Thank uh, you. And good day for you. Cheers. <laughs>